With an area of just 44 hectares, the Vatican has become the smallest country on our planet. Located in the middle of the Italian capital Rome, the miniature state is the center of the Christian faith for over a billion Catholics. At the same time, the Vatican's home to the last absolute ruler in Europe, the Pope. The claimed representative for Christ on Earth combines the legislative, executive, and judiciary roles into one person and has always had a great influence on world politics. So, while the representatives of the Vatican present themselves to the outside world as extremely pious fellow believers, it's been suspected for many centuries that the leaders of the Catholic Church are in fact hiding forbidden knowledge that could throw the world of their followers into chaos. Before we get started, be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. We now show you which 10 exciting secrets of the Vatican contribute to this questionable reputation. The Forbidden Gospel According to the official Bible canon, Jesus Christ never married, let alone fathered descendants. Allegedly, however, there is a document from the 6th century in the secret archives of the Vatican that shakes this basic assumption to its foundations. More specifically, it's a manuscript that was once translated from Greek into Syriac. The scriptures are meant to be the missing link in the life of Jesus Christ. Well, the New Testament tells us about the birth of the Messiah and his ministry before the crucifixion. His adolescence and early adulthood are completely omitted. According to the controversial theory, Jesus Christ fell in love with Mary Magdalene as a young adult. What's more, the couple even had a child together. The only problem with this text is that, in order for a text to be considered truly inspired by God, it must have been written around the time that Jesus actually roamed the earth, or the author must have been given special permission to write such a text. Better yet, in almost every situation, the author was a member of the church, a follower of God, or someone who would later convert to the faith. However, with this text being written in the 6th century, many historians believe that it lacks credibility. However, since we don't know much about Jesus' teen or young adult years, there's a slight chance that the document could be telling the truth. However, according to official biblical canon, the text is most likely nothing more than a forgery. Three Secrets of Fatima it's April 4, 1957, when a sealed envelope enters the secret archives of the Vatican. It would be more than four decades before the envelope was reopened and its contents revealed. So, we know today that it contained the three legendary secrets of Fatima. In detail, these are the messages that three simple shepherd children are said to have received in 1917 during an apparition of Mary. However, the Holy Virgin Mary is said to have strictly forbidden the children from passing on this new knowledge. In 1927, one of the children, Lucia dos Santos, is said to have received permission to reveal the first two secrets. However, her minister forced her to burn the prophecies she had written down. Almost 15 years later, the secrets were in the possession of a bishop, and later they found their way into the hands of the Vatican. The first secret is about a gigantic sea of fire that hides in the depths of the earth. Inside are fiendish demons and tormented souls. As part of the second secret, Mary warns of a devastating catastrophe. If human beings don't stop offending God by their actions, the Lord of the worlds will provoke cruel wars and severe famines. Finally, the third revelation describes an apocalypse and the final fall of the world. In truth, each of these prophecies do seem to be coming true. After all, famine is inevitable at some point in the future. Worse yet, we know that the end of the world may be just around the corner when you consider global warming and continued wars. However, there's virtually no evidence that proves that this so-called vision wasn't anything more than a child's wild imagination. Banned Books 
In 1611, the Bible was first translated from Latin into English. At that time, the holy scriptures of the Christians still comprised 80 books. If you compare the original size of the Bible with what it is today, it quickly becomes clear that it now only has 66 books. In fact, in 1684, the Vatican decided to delete 14 books that had previously formed the end of the Old Testament along with some other writings that haven't been included in the official Bible canon. These banished passages are referred to as the apocryphal books. This expression means something like dark or hidden in most languages. Sections deleted by the Vatican include the books of Ezra, Tobit, Judith, and the Book of Wisdom. The Vatican also changed the pronunciation of Jesus' name. Previously, it was still Yahoshua. Why those responsible decided to delete 14 books from the Old Testament at once is still the subject of heated debates today. Some have suggested that there were passages in the banned writings that didn't fit with the concept of the Roman Catholic Church. However, why the Vatican changed the word of God to suit its claims is uncertain. Most historians and Christian believers say that the books simply don't fit in with biblical canon. After all, historically speaking, the Bible doesn't contain any contradictions, aside from a few one-off passages that may not perfectly align with one another. Though this is often boiled down to simple translation mistakes. However, in terms of salvation and the story of Jesus Christ, the Bible doesn't contain any contradictions whatsoever. Though some of the books that were removed seem to not align with all of the other books of the Bible, suggesting that they may not have been truly inspired works. Worse yet, some of the books were not written in the correct time period as the remaining books, meaning that they too cannot be definitively proven as being part of biblical canon. Fighting the Devil What for most of us is just a questionable, long outdated practice from the Middle Ages was an integral part of everyday life for the Roman Catholic priest Gabriel Amorth exorcisms. In 1986, the Italian became the official exorcist of the Diocese of Rome. Over the course of his life, Amorth has treated more than 70,000 people allegedly possessed by demonic beings. The Catholic, who owned a small office in Vatican City, always vehemently defended his actions to the press. As a result, the devil is an almost invincible spirit that can take many different forms. The very fact that the Vatican approved more than 70,000 exorcisms seems pretty terrifying. Even more frightening is an incident that the priest claims to have experienced in the early 1980s. Amorth claimed that the devil had managed to get into the Vatican at that time. Then Satan tried to attack Pope John Paul II. Susanna Maiolo is also said to have been driven by demonic forces. During their attack on Pope Benedict XVI, thwarted in 2008, the following year she managed to knock over the Vicar of Christ, breaking the leg and hip of French Cardinal Roger Echegaray. Two years after the incident, the Pope granted his attacker a private audience. Susanna stated that she regretted the attack from the bottom of her heart. Benedict XVI forgave her and wished her the best for the future. While priests like Gabrielle Amorth suspected that the Swiss woman was possessed by the devil, from the medical point of view it seems more likely that she suffers from a mental illness. The exorcist died on September 16, 2016 at the age of 91. Aliens According to his own statements, the Russian professor Genrich Ludwig once gained access to the secret archives of the Vatican. While the story is still hotly debated to this day and has never been officially confirmed, let's take a closer look at the events that supposedly took place in the 1920s. The story goes that Ludwig came across over 35,000 writings in the secret archives. While browsing through some of these ancient texts, the Russian noticed something that just didn't make sense. Accordingly, the Vatican's secret archives are said to contain banned treatises that tell how extraterrestrial intelligences influenced the ancients. 
But that's not all. Ludwig is said to have found historical records of the use of ancient nuclear weapons. Since the visitor was of course not allowed to take the relevant documents outside with him, he was never able to prove his shocking claims. Double Standards Vatican City has a long history of wealth, financial power, and great political influence. Did you know, for example, that the Vatican invested 1 million euros in the production of the film Rocket Man? This is in stark contrast to the attitude the Catholic Church takes towards homosexual partnerships. In view of this, Elton John, whose career is shown in the film, was also extremely angry. In this regard, however, the Vatican indicated that the funding was rather accidental. For example, the Vatican Secretariat of State owned shares in the Centurion Global Fund. The money was originally planned for the film White Lies. Since this ultimately did not materialize, the fund managers diverted the money to other productions. However, the fundamental moral conflict did not stop the Vatican from keeping a good chunk of the cake. Rocket Man brought in around 200 million US dollars, and the Vatican Secretariat of State made a profit of 13.5%. UFO over Vatican City About 15 years ago, a strange structure was sighted in the sky over Vatican City, which some believe to be an extraterrestrial spaceship. Eyewitnesses described the object as an orange and silver ship hovering over the dome of St. Peter's Basilica. The unknown flying object was photographed and many people saw it, but shortly afterwards, nobody spoke about it anymore. Conspiracy theorists rumored that this was by no means an isolated case. According to this, the members of the Vatican are in lively exchange with extraterrestrial intelligences. What do you think of such controversial theories? Let us know in the comments below. The Vatican Secret Archives There's probably no other place on our globe that's accompanied by as many rumors and legends as the Vatican Secret Archives. The archive contains about 85 kilometers of shelves of documents. The texts that have been officially inventoried alone total 35 thousand volumes. The best-known works stored in the secret archive include letters from Michelangelo and the English King Henry VIII, as well as the excommunication against Martin Luther. However, since the majority of the collection is kept under lock and key, the most adventurous theories abound about the things that the Vatican wants to hide from us. Some even believe that the Catholic Church keeps weird things like time machines or alien bodies here. Incidentally, in 2019, the Vatican Secret Archives were renamed the Vatican Apostolic Archives. Will this name change help prevent conspiracy theories in the future? Hardly likely. Crime Crime is a foreign word where around 18 million devout Catholics gather every year to celebrate their Christian faith. Right? Not correct. Because, in truth, the Vatican State has the highest crime rate in the world. What at first sounds like a genuine criminal's paradise becomes much less dramatic when we take a closer look at the crimes. Instead of murder and manslaughter, minor offenses such as handbag theft are the order of the day here. Particularly bitter for the victims, 90% of all crimes go unpunished. In most cases, the crooks manage to escape to Italy in time. But even if a gangster gets caught by investigators, they're confronted with a major problem. The Vatican prison can only accommodate two inmates and is hardly ever used. Bizarre Trial in the year 897, one of the most bizarre trials in history took place. It was not a murderer or a thief who was in the dock, but Pope Formosus. The problem 
At that point, the head of the Catholic Church had been dead for a few months. This prevented his successor Stephen VI from officially indicting his predecessor. To this end, the body of the Pope was exhumed clothed in a robe and placed on the papal throne. What followed then cannot be surpassed in terms of madness. During the trial, Stephen VI spoke incessantly at the deceased and yelled at him so violently as if he were still alive and kicking. At the end of this absurd trial, Formosus was found guilty of usurping the papacy. As a result, the dead defendant had his finger cut off and his body thrown into the river Tiber. The the judgment of the corpse process was revoked by a later pope, so that Formosus was buried again in the Vatican necropolis. But this was then followed by another conviction, which is why the body ended up back in the Tiber. The body was later returned to the necropolis, where it was buried for the third and last time. All right, folks, now it's your turn. What are your thoughts on the Vatican? We're already looking forward to your comments. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe so you never miss one of our videos again. Thank you for watching. Have a good one and see you next time.